for Court Pumps, who's one half of the See The Thingist podcast that's formerly on the Joe Budden network. And it looks like they've just announced that this is going to be their final quote unquote season on the Joe Budden podcast and they're going to podcast network or Joe Budden network and they're now going to move on to do their own thing. And it's hilarious to me as a as a fan of Joe Budden and a fan of his podcast sort of rebirth um, that this is sort of happening and things are kind of crumbling around him. But it's also somewhat sad as well to see somebody who you kind of held up or I held up in such high esteem who I was hoping would be able to kind of reinvent himself and be able to have a new lease of life in the media space. And again, being thoroughly entertaining and be able to kind of build the network up into being a behemoth and kind of taking over shit and kind of challenging what sort of um, Charlemagne's doing with the Black Effect podcast or network or Black Effect network, however you, can, however you call it. But it looks like there's only one clear win into where he he's doing his things and where Joe's doing his things are completely different things so the announcement says as follows um we have wrapped up season one or see the thing is and in doing so we are departing from Joe Budden Network we will be independent moving forward this last year has been a wild one I want to also I'll thank everyone who's been along for the ride and those of you who are going to be uh the new to the nieces and nephews tribe we've grown to love eh? you call your fans nieces and nephews weird um no idea about that one um same show same attitude new home i am bridget kelly and i want to thank those who have supported us and growing the podcast network um a book podcast sorry and much thanks to joe budden ian parks save on um, whoever that person is and the entire joe budden network team da, 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 da. obviously people leaving heart eyes and messages and i think people were mainly kind of kind of eye opened the fact that Mar left a message and they replied to his and no one else's and shit. Whatever, yeah? Cool. Um it's funny. It's hilarious because you would imagine this would come off the back of the fact that Rory and Mar were able to get to the bag quite quickly, despite their podcast not being that great. Let's be honest. Even though we're fans of the show again, I'm fans of them. I'm happy they got the bag. I'm always going to be rooting for those guys because I think Joe was an absolute scumbag and um, when it comes to how he dealt with them. But the podcast isn't the greatest and they still got a pretty hefty bag. So if they can do it, these girls must be thinking, hey, our podcast isn't as bad. No, our podcast isn't maybe as good as the Joe Budden original podcast, but it's definitely good enough to get ourselves a little bag too. And again, two, you know, maybe one attractive young lady and another one's maybe super open about her sexual escapades it's gonna be easy probably for them to get a deal and find a new home somewhere i would imagine so and also you don't leave a network like you don't leave a place without some sort of plan in mind so for sure they're gonna pitch people they probably had meetings already but it's just hilarious that they're branding this as like a season one and season two we were never told there was going to be seasons um shows that do seasons anyway or podcasts are always a bit strange especially when it's not an actual episode you're sort of like show show it's just like a podcast you just ramble and talking to make sure to tell us a season just sounds bizarre but again i think it's branding and again you know they're probably doing this as maybe as a call to action let people know hey we are free we are doing our thing let's go but it's interesting on the joe budden end of things that the one podcast that he kind of or the fact that he kind of started this network um with female-led shows despite there not being that many female listeners in in general i'd imagine of the joe Biden podcast was bizarre but also the fact that it felt like he did it more so because he wanted to try and um rewrite the narrative that existed out there during the time that he was a little bit you know he had some very bad relations with women so in order to kind of rewrite that narrative let's host or let's get all these women-led podcasts on my network so people don't think i'm a piece of shit and it clearly didn't work because what ended up happening in true Joe Biden fashion, he ended up self imploding and he ended up causing his own issues so much so to to the point where he brings on these female podcasts to kind of rehabilitate his image with the Shade Room Collective, right? Or, or with the Shade Room Sisters. That doesn't go to plan because he ends up, you know, allegedly sexually assaulting one of the co hosts of this show, former co hosts. Um, who then kind of comes out with the complaint. And then these two girls who are about women empowerment decide to back up Joe publicly and basically throw a smart on the name of their former co-host because they, they didn't like her. So imagine women again, they were own worst enemies. They complain about men, but usually it's women doing shit to each other. Joe allegedly sexually assaults their former co-host, but because they don't like her, they willingly kind of excuse his behavior because it's going to allow them to do the show on their own, right? And because they just don't like her in general. So they kind of had a dog in the race in terms of Joe. 
that ends up essentially scuppering any opportunities Joe had in terms of getting deals in because Square, because it cash up or one of those uh, sponsors walked away, which definitely is going to affect the ability to him to pay other people on the network, which may also affect their ability to maybe bring in sponsorships on being part of the network itself. Because I don't know how it works. I don't know if the business, if I don't know if the behind the scenes is, you sign up, you get you know you get tech and shit. Maybe you have to pay a sub. I don't know how it works. And maybe the deals that you bring in, you keep for yourself. But whatever they generate on their channel, they keep. I don't know how it works. I don't know. Don't ask me. But maybe there's something in it. The fact that the Patreon was separate. The fact that he never promoted the show. He never kind of brought them on his show. Like It was just a weird way to promote a network. It didn't make any sense. Essentially, a lot of people have said it and made the same point. It was never a network. It was just a YouTube channel that had different shows on it. And again, none of these shows were established. They just kind of tried to start them from the ground up. Maybe his biggest success has been see the thing is the other one girl i guess is complete failure now especially off the back of karen civil's you know scammy ways allegedly again scammy ways but this has definitely been the biggest success out of all of them maybe you could argue that you know the the, the rory and mole show came out of the job but not really do you know what i mean that was basically them being put into a corner and trying to kind of uh, figure stuff out on the fly but it again it should have always been um, maybe something of a sports I think a lot of people have made this point maybe there should have been something of a sportsy type of relationship type podcast with maybe a couple of girls a couple of guys to kind of you know lean into the demographic that they already have maybe a music review show like something but bringing two female led shows of this ilk with such I would say divisive personalities in Karen Civil and this girl for Kurt Pumps. Like I'm not really a fan of her. I think she's a bit of a garbage human personally, just from what I've seen online. Um, not really a fan at all. So they're already of their two turn offs on two shows and two halves of you know of the show too who kind of carry it and kind of lead conversations. So if you can't listen to them because you don't like their personality, how are you gonna listen to the show, Jeremy? You know I mean? So it's like that wasn't necessarily the best idea. And just, you know, again, the way he shit on his friends, I think if you're on the network, you have to take notice. Again, I think a lot of the, a lot of blame could be put at the feet of Rory and Mole, you know, business wise and what they did. And essentially, they basically went into business with Joe, thinking he fucked over all these other people, and he's not gonna do it to me because we're friends. And he ended up doing it to him because they're friends. So if you're somebody on the network who isn't a close friend of Joe's, just a professional acquaintance, you have to kind of be objective and be quite cutthroat about how you approach it. Be like, nah. I can't let this go. I can't be the guy that kind of gets stuck in this position. So I need to make a move. And they did. They made a move and here they are. And um, hopefully it works out for them and they're able to get to the bag. Um, again, I don't listen to the show. Don't care about it. Haven't listened to one full episode, I think, ever since maybe Rory's show. But again, it's a great illustration that maybe from all the things Joe said about business and, you know, the corporations and vo culture vultures and shit, from what we've seen so far, everyone has been able to walk away from Joe intact has been able to get to some sort of bag he would obviously take credit for some of it but essentially we get to the point where we might say you know what maybe he's the problem maybe it's not these big corporations maybe it's not spotify maybe it's not barstool maybe it's not all these places maybe he actually is the issue in terms of not being able to get you know bags for himself and secure deals and stuff because like i said again i'm not a fan of the guy anymore i think he's a piece of shit but i still think someone of his of his ilk definitely deserves um, what you call it definitely deserves a a bag definitely deserves some compensation some recognition of the work that he's done of the blueprint that he laid um in being able to do this thing in this sort of urban market when it comes to podcasting and media and all that stuff like he's definitely laid the blueprint no one can say he hasn't or he's definitely played an instrumental part in allowing people to know how to maneuver and how to figure stuff out and be conscious of deals all this so even though he didn't practice it himself the, he, still the awakening is good enough and i think for that alone you should be able to get something you know from it i'm sure he's still making good money from it now but still it should be more do you know what i mean for the for the work he's done but again this might be karma you know what i mean you can't fuck over your friends in public like that and expect strangers to also want to work with you it just doesn't work do you know what i mean and the narrative's got a bit weird it's just it's just a bad move for him in general but hey again what do i know wishing all those see the thing see the thing is girls luck and hope they're able to secure the bag on their way to the top